morning. <clears throat> or a good afternoon or even good evening, depending on your time zone. Um, my name is uh, Marco Kunders. I will take you through the presentation from Flow Group to um, explain to you the, the yard shunt management solution which we have built. Um, first quick introduction of myself. Um, I've been working with OTM uh, Geolog uh, since 2003. I think it was version 2.5 or 3.7, at least the days before order movements. And um, with a small sidestep, I've been working with OTM since then. And um, prior to my OTM uh, days, Geolog days, I was actively uh, in in European operational transport in various roles, uh, even as a driver or an international planner and management uh, roles. And the last, uh, the last part helped me, uh, especially uh, around the shunt management as well in various design discussions. So let's take a start and um, I will take you through the agenda, which means uh, we do a quick introduction again of flow. There has been already a, a sponsor uh, uh, presentation, so I, I don't want to go into depth there. We will take you through the um, implementation project where we started to build a solution and their timelines and its timelines. There will be a section on the functional walk, walk through uh, what it means, shunt management. And we uh, will show you a couple of the steps and features of the so-called shunter planner in this application, as well as the shunter driver. Uh, questions are there which you can uh, raise and they will be uh, raised at the end of the, uh, they will be handled at the end of the presentation. Uh, and in case of uh, technical questions, we might be uh, um, coming back to you later because my background is more the functional part and the technical part we, uh, we probably have to answer later if it's an in-depth uh, question. Okay, uh, so as we said, Flow Group uh, probably know well, quite well, our team is uh, approximately 160 consultants split uh, uh, across OTM experts, but also uh, WMS uh, uh, consultants, including uh, various uh, SAP services. Um, and we are focusing on uh, the transportation warehousing as well as GTM. And over 200 uh, successful implementations we have been uh, providing. Uh, within and also out, uh, outside Europe. Our head office is in uh, uh, Europe, um, in the Netherlands, and I'm also based in the, in the Netherlands. Um, about the, the, the client and, and the business area where we were uh, uh, trying to challenge ourselves for this uh, solution, it's a, it's a multinational automotive manufacturer, and we were running the project uh, from their uh, European headquarters in Belgium. And the client uh, they are managing from that pro from that area, they are managing heavily uh, the, the the sales and marketing, but also the spare parts uh, flows and accessorials. Um, of course, they have uh, plants of manufacturing and, and, and engineering around the process of uh, creating their vehicles. Um, but our focus is on uh, the transportation flows of their spare parts. Timelines. Hey, Marco, sorry to interrupt you for a sec. Can you speak up a little bit? We're having some comments that they're having trouble hearing you. Okay. Thank I you. I will get closer to the mic. Yeah, we try that. Um, so the <clears throat> the project timelines, uh, as we had to uh, um, uh, agree with the customer, we started in 2018. And um, the scope, as, um, as mentioned, is uh, the main focus is the transportation of the spare parts inbound uh, from their suppliers into the central European warehouse and outbound out of the, uh, out of the warehouse to their networks uh, to reach their dealerships. And the project was basically um, uh, consisting of two major uh, projects. One is uh, we had to bring live the classical, let's say more OTM type of uh, TMS features, functionalities, which was shipment planning, um, execution, uh, set up the rating and enforcing settlement part. And um, we, were really, uh, we were setting up a very quiet and tight schedule using scheduled uh, trips. Um, as this was, this is the business process where scheduled trips are predefined and they were um, um, loaded into OTM. The second project is where we try to connect and we have connected uh, our TMS solution 
um, with the shunt management part, which is around shunting of uh, containers and trailers on the on the on their central yard around their warehouse. Um, we we managed to bring it live at uh, the end of April this year, and we had uh, some hypercare support, but we had a quite an extensive knowledge transfer session. So they quite successfully were able to to run and manage the, this uh, solution themselves. Kerry, uh, is. Do you think it's better now the way we are trying to run it? Yep, I think it sounds good for me. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe if some people are still okay. having trouble hearing, they can check the volume within the event app and then on their device as well. Yeah. So the TMS part, which means the, uh, we had to integrate with, uh, with uh, the yard uh, shunt management solution. Um, talking about shunt management, um, this is all around um, moving your containers and trailers at, your, at the yard of the customer or at the premise of uh, the manufacturing site. Um, try to uh, efficiently get those trailers uh, um, and CTUs uh, at the agreed appointment time at the right dock at the right time. And uh, the volume that we had to manage there was approximately 450 of those shunt tasks to move uh, trailers from a certain point to a certain point. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the challenge was also we had to replicate uh, a, a one to one um, a specific part of their of that uh, business process. Um, of course, you can imagine that ideally, if you bring in a trailer and a driver, you want to unload and, and immediately reload it for outbound. So that's something that we uh, had to uh, cover. Um, the other parts for the inbound flow um, was that um, in the arriving trucks, their situation was as follows, that they were having multiple shipments at the same, in the same trailer where they uh, had the flexibility to unload um, those shipments, maybe not even at the same time, but at different times during the day or at different dock doors. So quite some flexibility for unloading and the same type, the same type of flexibility uh, um, is also available for outbound processes where they want to meet the, let's say the optimization of the picking and packing and schedules of their warehouse resources. So that was the leading game which um, was making OTM following uh, the transportation following that schedule. And that was leading to these type of uh, situations that uh, if you're loading an outbound trailer, it could come to the dock door um, one, two, or three or multiple times. What we added and improved was more in the area of uh, interfacing and integration with the warehouse. Um, <clears throat> the um, um, the, at the gate in process to start, we um, we, we we built in um, a check a check mechanism to meet cert, to see if certain criteria were met. In this case, it was about the fact that the driver had to be trained. He had to prove that he had followed a certain exam. Uh, the other criteria is that the trailer um, was checked and should not be damaged, so it had to have the, a green light as well. And the last one is that for inbound flows, we uh, had an integration set up with a customs uh, clearance uh, application via their uh, own legacy. Um, uh, because for, for inbound, uh, customs clearance uh, was needed at some point. And then we were having to wait for approval for the customs clearance uh, authorities to, uh, to say, yes, now, now you are okay, you can enter the premises. So we, we set up a process to validate those criteria and allow the trailer to go in or not. In case of a damage, um, the gatehouse operator, the person at the, at the gate in, he um, was able to flag uh, a CTU to say there is something wrong, you're not allowed to load or unload, and that we're stopping and setting the CTU on hold, but also <coughs> Uh, also, the, the service provider was going to receive a message that there was something wrong with the CTU, and he was expected to, uh, to, promise, uh, um, uh, um, to send us a promised repair date or a promised uh, act or an actual um, uh, fixed date of, the, of, this, of that particular CTU. Um, we uh, set up extra integration, which means that after the, after the successful gate in, 
we sent a message to the WMS to say this truck, this shipment has now physically arrived and warehouse be, be aware in the next 30, 40 minutes, this truck uh, probably needs to go to your, one of your drop doors. Um, <clears throat> as soon as the, the uh, uh, CTU was docked at the dock door, um, as a result of the shunting activity, there was a, an, another special message sent, which says the CTU, the trailer has now been docked. Um, and we, did, we, were, we were sending a, um, a, 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 a carrier at door message to the WMS, which allows them from a technical point of view to continue the loading or unloading of, uh, from, uh, from, a, from a WMS point of view. If that message was not sent, they basically were uh, stopped in their processes. So that was a quite key, key message. And then there are a couple of small features uh, which, uh, <clears throat> which I can uh, uh, explain later via some screens. Of, of course, um, the, the shunt management application, the main task of the shunt management application is to pick up all these requests to start moving trailers and, and find the most suitable shunter unit and shunter driver which at that moment in time, as you can see, is not having its break or, or pause. So we have, a, a, there's a break and pause schedule set up in the background uh, in the, in the shunt uh, management application that exactly can check which driver uh, is having his break. So we are not assigning a task to that uh, person at that time. Um, another feature which is quite important is the quality of the, of the inventory of the parking. To, to, to check if, if drivers, external drivers from, truck, from trucking companies are um, quite accurate in, in where they drop their trailers if they don't make mistakes. Because if they start to do that, you can imagine that uh, uh, the wrong parkings are set full and the system says it's empty. So um, shunter drivers have the ability to do a parking check and, um, and constantly try to uh, check the quality of the inventory of, the, of all parkings. I can take you uh, quickly through the system landscape. So the system that we have, uh, fa are facing in this uh, custom situation, uh, of course, base, uh, we have classic, uh, the classic ones as the ERP and, and WMS, which are, is uh, our, as usual, interface with OTM. In OTM, we have an OTM uh, domain for transportation shipments, and we have a yard, uh, a yard domain, um, which we are using as a second level, and that's this level for shunt movements. We also have, as, as quite common, uh, the, the surfprof portal, carrier portal, so to say, and we have set up a special portal for suppliers where they can uh, um, um, uh, contribute to the transportation process. I'll come back to that later. The, the green box, this is the extra uh, uh, environment which we have built and set up. It's uh, basically, we started on a cloud instance. So it's a cloud to cloud situation where we are integrating the TMS with our own cloud uh, instance, uh, but it's free to remove it to an on-premise if, if the customer wants to do that. So in this type of connection, we are interfacing uh, shunt movements. We bring it to the shunt planning application and we send the result back. For the total configuration setup and data loading, we are using our homegrown uh, Evolve tool, which is uh, built to uh, load rates, load master data, and especially in the in the amount of ground schedules, we have uh, prepared some features that we the customer can easily load in a, on a frequent basis all these ground schedules. If we then uh, if we then take a look at the um, uh, the domains that are uh, that we are using, and it's quite important to, to, to know that there are three levels. So we have the original, let's say, mother domain. This is the classic uh, domain where we have built our transportation shipments, inbound, they call them allowances, outbound flows shipments. And we are using this as the starting point of the shunt uh, process, because the next level down is, at some point, we need to have an instruction, an instruction to say, uh, this trailer, which is about to arrive, we need to move it from a parking to a dock door. Uh, in that case, we call it an onwards shunt shipment or an onwards shunt movement. Or it needs to go back from the dock door back to the parking. 
So that's the second level of um, uh, a system uh, setup where we have created a yard domain. So this yard domain is used by the gatehouse operator to do everything around uh, the shunting. And the, 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 the header domain is used by the transportation planner to control and monitor what happens from a transportation point of view. So if there is a delay on the arrival on, on transport, it of course has a knock-on effect on what on the shunting that can, can could happen even later. The third level is again what we have built as our shunt management solution. This is all around uh, all the tasks. So a shunt movement is sent to uh, to our cloud solution. It becomes a shunt task, and a shunt task is on on a shunter planner and a shunter driver level. And the shunt task uh, is telling it's an, an onwards uh, task uh, at the parking to pin. So you hook on the trailer and you drop it at the dock, or it's a uh, return shunt task where you pick it up from the dock, you pin it at the dock and you complete it at the parking. And we are recording exactly the timings uh, of these exercises. So we have a shunter driver, shunter unit, we have your trailers, uh, we call it CTU, and inside the cabin of the shunter, there's an onboard device. There is no need to have some GPS label at each trailer to try to identify what the exact position of the CTU is, of the, uh, what the exact position of the container of the trailer is. In this solution, this is not needed. Um, I'm not going to take you through a detailed uh, workflow uh, process flow. The reason why we are showing is, is again, you can see the three levels. We have our OTM shipment. It's used for different parties. We have the yard shipment and the, and the shunt task. Let me quickly show you um, the, the first part. So the OTM shipment is used because we are creating uh, shipments from ground schedules they are visible in a workbench and we are at at this first point already we are uh, inserting and creating all these appointments which are telling us exactly what is the demand from from the warehouse who have, at, at what point in time at which dock door a certain shipment should arrive and and these appointments are constantly uh, maintained or updated and and this happens in uh, in on this level and what you also can see that we are asking our service provider also to be part of the game because he has to um, uh, submit prior to arrival certain informations which are used at the gating process, which is the trailer number, the driver name, the license plate. And there is a feature that if anything is wrong with the CTU where he is asked to repair, there is a feature in this uh, uh, portal where he can tell us the details of uh, the process of a CTU uh, getting fixed or a trailer getting fixed. Um, what you also will see is that there is quite a lot of traffic between um, the WMS, the, the transportation shipment, and then it goes further down into the yard shipment. These are the events which are uh, used during the execution process. It's a carrier on site message, it's a carrier at door message, there is a loading finish message coming from the warehouse. There is a paperwork finished message coming back. These are all critical messages needed in the process. And there's a constant um, uh, back and forth um, uh, event uh, message going on between those domains. This is something that we have to uh, set up. Because we, we, we are, uh, the ideal uh, situation is that all these shunt movements they are uh, being um, uh, uh, executed. So we are trying to find the parking. We do a checking at uh, the gate. Um, then we are, there are tons of reasons where uh, things have to be changed. This is all happening on the, beyond the yard shunt movement level. And then we are seeing that we are sending these shunt tasks to the shunt application here. And um, the, what really starts to happen is that the execution of the shunt task also leads to uh, events uh, which we are sending back via the shunt movement, uh, even on top back to the transportation level. And that results in a situation that um, the, the execution on the yard uh, leads into a, a, a growing history of events where you can exactly see what the progress is of shunting and, as, uh, and, and that will be that is propagated that is sent to also to the transportation 
uh, shipment. So the transport the transport planner who owns these shipments, he has his own workbench, uh, which can uh, where he can uh, quite in detail see what the, the progress of the the, the, the actual shunting uh, is. <clears throat> okay, there we go. In a nutshell, um, the features that are within each step, I will uh, I will quickly uh, show here. Um, so uh, the parking location assignment, um, this is a situation where we have agreed that we are checking one hour prior to the plant arrival, uh, can we find the smart and best parking depending on the, the warehouse and uh, which of the parkings which are related to that uh, area of the warehouse is empty and we try to take it and we set it into reserved. Um, there are also situations where the, um, there's a kind of agreement with the carrier that they say, yeah, but we don't want that uh, uh, the customer is going to shunt our trailers. The driver will always uh, stay with our own trailer. And then we are talking about live loading or live unloading. And then there is no shunting required. We know that upfront, but there is also an, an option that we are changing that if there is, if there is an urgent need to, to not shunt, but do a, a more urgent live loading. Uh, pass through is a situation where the, the C2, the trailer, and the driver just stop at the main warehouse uh, for uh, customs clearance, and then he continues his journey uh, for to an overflow or an extra, external warehouse. Gating, we have kind of touched already. It's it's done by the gatehouse operator, and he is uh, uh, actively setting an, an arrived event, which is used for reporting and quality purposes and which also shows the transportation planner that a certain truck has arrived. So he can immediately see it on his dashboard. Um, customs clearance, we talked about the trailers as well. If we have a successful gate in finish, we're sending a so-called OSI message, carrier on site message, and we are setting the parking into uh, full. The, the parking that we have claimed in the first step is then set to full automatically. Um, the, the, during operations uh, and, and pre preparation of the shunting, uh, obviously you can imagine that uh, because of the business dynamics, there are quite a lot of reasons that you want to make changes. So I, I quickly show you later a dashboard where you can see that uh, if anything happens on the transportation level, uh, truck too late, or for instance, uh, the warehouse has a problem with a certain dock door that they ask the transportation planner. Yeah, we need to reschedule that dock door that uh, it, it can move to a different dock door. These type of activities uh, are happening in this part of the solution. So it's maintenance of shunt movement activities, start time, different dock door. We have a problem with the parking, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the next step is that, yes, if we have these shunt movements ready and it's a successful gate in, the driver has dropped the, the, the CTU at the parking and he, he just goes out and picks an outbound and he's gone, the trailer is waiting to go to the doctor. And there is a business rule in our process that says we are going to send uh, these shunt tasks to the shunt application when it's ready to do so. And, and in, in this situation, it's approximately 30 minutes prior to the start time of the shunting that we are going to send um, this shunt task to the shunt application asking can you find a shunter unit and a shunter driver for this task um, <clears throat> let's see if the shunter driver receives this task on his uh, device uh, the key functionalities for him is basically pinning and completing uh, we have the scheduled break, so his coffee break is on it, and um, he can do the driver uh, check. He can reject the task, and uh, what happens is uh, obviously, as if 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 a trailer is uh, slightly parked wrong uh, in in a, uh, in a incorrect uh, angle or it's too far away from the dock, um, they can submit a shunt correction to to do a reshunt and and re and, and reshunt it at the same uh, same dock. Last step is gate out for the outbound flow. Um, it's not only full trailers that uh, will leave the premises, which follow this process, but also sometimes it happens that there are too many empty trailers from a certain service provider. And uh, the customer will ask uh, 
please, can you remove your uh, uh, 20 empty trailers because you're stealing away our capacity. So we have to, uh, there are uh, other, let's say in this case, other options to gate out uh, uh, trailers and they can either be damaged or, uh, or empty. <clears throat> if we follow the uh, gate out process, uh, at the end of the uh, gate out process, we are telling our transportation shipment on the OTM level that uh, this, this shipment has effectively departed. So we set it into, let's say, the en route departed uh, status at the same time. Um, timelines and steps. So uh, we created this part of the presentation to give you a bit of feeling in the sequences of, uh, of, of the process itself. So as you can imagine, we have a big yard at a certain uh, factory from your uh, customer. It can have one or multiple warehouses. And what we have been uh, uh, told is that, yes, do a smart move. Uh, they, they told us that for a certain warehouse, they have a preference on certain parking. So there's a preference rule. And we know the exact timings, how long it takes to move a trailer uh, from a parking to a dock door or a dock from dock to the parking. Any situation we have stored in a, in a surface uh, time uh, table and we're looking up uh, the time that it needs to go from one to the other. Um, <clears throat> here we have again, we have our transportation shipment uh, on, the, on the high level, our shunt movement and the tasks. So what we are going to do is uh, every 49 days prior to arrival of the client, the customer is loading the, the, the scheduled trips, uh, the scheduled shipments into OTM. And there's a lot of information already on that shipment. It tells us exactly the timing and the dock door uh, 49 days in advance um, when a certain trailer needs to be at the dock. And this is um, quite specific, but you don't need to do that. If, you, if you're running the, let's say, the, the occasional or the traditional uh, dock door scheduling, you, you will come to the same uh, data information. You will have your, your appointment table filled with uh, the start and end time of the appointment. And that's the one we are using for the next uh, step. But anyway, this process is a bit prior, uh, prior to arrival. We are loading those shipments and at some point, we are, and that's uh, seven days prior to pick up, we start to create our shunt movements. And seven days prior to pick up is to get, to start to get early enough an impression of how busy the, the, the expected shunting activity is to ensure that we have enough capacity uh, on time if, if we are going to uh, shunt all these uh, shipments. And the next step is that the service provider is going to pick up based on the transportation uh, a process where he has to, uh, we follow the tender, accept tender, so he has all the details. The service provider shows up at the supplier, he picks up the goods, and he's, go, he's going um, to make his uh, move in uh, going into the, uh, the direction of the warehouse. So what we are doing is one hour prior to the planned arrival of the transportation shipment, which we know, we are going to um, find, try to find parking. So uh, based on the preference rules, we found the parking and we are claiming it. We are setting it into automatically into reserved. Prior to that, we don't know what, the, uh, what, what parking is. So we don't know the source in this, but as soon as we know the source in this, we know uh, how much time it takes to get at this case, dock 45. So we have calculated the start time of the shunt movement. So the start time is known, the dock door is known, um, and the shipment ID is known. And now uh, we are in this part of the process, we're getting close to a situation that it's, it's robust enough to start sending it to the uh, third level, which is you have to plan this task. Yeah, You have to find a shunter. And that's the next, next task at, um, at a certain point. Um, Okay, yeah, we are at gate in, we are sending an OSI message to the, to, uh, uh, to the WMS. Our driver arrives, everything is happy, he's trained, uh, the, the documents are checked and the trailer is also fine and he's allowed to drop it at the parking. And then um, we assuming that the parking is full. The next step is we are waiting till it's time to send this shunt task to the shunt uh, to the shunt planning application. It doesn't make sense to do it too early. So we agree 30 minutes to the before it needs to be shunted, we are sending it to the application with asking the, the shunt application, what's the best shunter, wh which from a uh, operational point of view is closest 
uh, it will finish his task closes and he can pick up that uh, either full or empty CTU. There is an onboard device where you can see it. And the shunter will execute the pinned status. If he shows, if he uh, pins it, that means that he moves it out of the parking. The parking will set to, uh, to empty and uh, he will move it to the dock. And as soon as he completes it at the dock, you can see it here. Um, he is pushing a complete button on his device. And that also triggers the message to the WMS to say, yes, uh, uh, technically um, and message wise, you have a fresh uh, uh, carry, uh, trailer at the dock, you can start loading or unloading. After unloading, our warehouse uh, system is telling uh, us, yes, we have finished the unloading, please take away this empty trailer. And that means that we are creating automatically, uh, upon arrival of this unloading finished, we are creating another uh, return movement, but it's the return movement from the dock back to the parking. So we are running the, the same exercise. We try to find an empty parking. It could be the same parking, but it could be a different one because this one could already be picked by the next arrival. This is an example inbound, outbound is almost the same. If we talk about workbenches and visibility, again, on two levels, we have our transportation shipment. We have a workbench on OTM level. It shows inbound shipments, outbound and block shipments with all the details to say it needs to be there. This is the carrier, this is the CTU, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you talk about the, 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 the shunt management part, uh, the execution, we are, we, there is a dedicated workflow that says, um, uh, a, a dedicated workbench that says, uh, I want to follow the shunt execution progress. What's coming in? What's going out? Are we are we running out of capacity? Uh, do we need more uh, shunt, uh, shunters to be uh, uh, activated, etc.? Um, so I will show you two screenshots. This is the screenshot uh, of a workbench where you can uh, see it's 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 not the let's say the the most obvious um, uh, appointment and scheduling what we normally see on uh, within OTM. This is the uh, workbench type of uh, appointments that, that we are using. And if I uh, zoom in a little bit. So the top section is, um, <clears throat> as I said, for inbound, you can find shipment. And then from the shipment, you see the details with the appointment. Here we are reading exactly the, the data from the appointment table, the start and end time of, uh, of the appointment as such, and the dock door where it needs to go. And if you, if you scroll down, you can see the timeline. And here are all the dock doors where um, we know from all those uh, ground schedules and these uh, scheduled shipments, which, which shipments need to be at a certain dock door at a certain time. So you can see it, there's a high density. There's a lot of stuff to do, but this is the appointment. Yeah? But at the front end of each appointment and at the back end appointment, there we have the shunting activity ensure that it's at the right moment, at the right time, at the right dock. So there is a little bit of activity here and here, and, and this is the, what happens on the, on the shunting. So if you see this type of, uh, uh, you know, let's say busyness, you can imagine that there is quite a lot of shunting to, uh, to do as well, to accommodate this type of uh, planning. And the, the workbench that uh, uh, is built uh, for to monitor the execution of the shunting is this workbench. And um, it's the workbench is in this situation, it's one screen where we now combine fi uh, five different, uh, let's say, informations from earlier customer screens, but they are now combined due to the integration that which what we have achieved. We are now able to show a very compact view of uh, let's say the progress of shunting and to dive into a bit more detail again so you have you have your shipment ids if it's an r it's a return movement if it's a dash whatever one or two it's an outbound uh, one step second step if it's a regular one you can see that's a normal shipment here you can see if it's inbound and outbound um, uh, this is the let's say the, the where it's in its life cycle in terms of where are we it's sent to a shunt plan a trailer is assigned here we have one is rejected by shunter for some reason um, here we are early in the process because the parking is assigned 
this is the information from where to where we need to go from a parking to a, to a drop door. Gating has not started. This is a return shipment. Um, we are, as I said, there is a lot of traffic in events. So the last event is always shown, which, which shows where it is in the process. If you see CTUP, it means it's picked up for uh, shunting. Um, this is a, a message from the shunt planning application where it is rejected. SP assigns that uh, uh, just a fresh shunter is assigned, but it's not yet shunted. This one uh, has received the shunting activity. This one uh, is goods arrived, it's a gate in arrived, so it's just arrived at, at the yard. So you can imagine that this view uh, with the st uh, planned start and end times of the shunting and the trailer uh, name and the service provider or the, the shunter that has been assigned is a very nice and compact view uh, where, where it's a rolling, a rolling uh, screen as soon as, soon as, a, as a, as a shunt movement has completed, it will take away, it will drop from the screen and the next one will appear. And this is found as a quite uh, a useful and very strong uh, screen. Um, <clears throat> to show a bit more on the, on, the, on the, let's say the shunt part, I will scroll through a couple of other screens with a small business case behind, uh, the, behind it. We, I'm going to show you uh, that we have to make a change because the warehouse told us that we have an issue with the certain in the warehouse. So we need to change um, a shunt task telling that it must go to another doctor. Um, and then um, you will see that we, uh, uh, then the, the, the trailer arrives. We, are, we can follow the normal gate in. Um, and then we switch to the screens of the shunter planner and, and uh, the shunter uh, driver. Okay, our test shipment, the 44, in the workbench that we have seen is uh, showing that we need to uh, go to dock 31. And we need to be there at, um, uh, we need to start shunting at 11.15. Um, um, we, we need to be at the dock at 11.15. Um, and, and this is, this is the, this is the view from the appointment. Immediately on the background, we, we have the, the, let's say the related yard uh, shunt movement, which is about uh, moving the CTU. And this has the same uh, information. Um, right. yeah. So here we can see, I need to be at the dock at 11.15. And, and that's what I, I need to achieve. This is the, 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 still the, the dock door, where they said, oh, sorry, we have a problem with uh, Doctor 31. You need to go to Doctor 17. Um, okay, the, the view that we have built up uh, for the shunt movement is built on the ship and view screen. And we added uh, some of the informations. And you can see here, we have a, a, an attribute field, it says, uh, if all the criteria for gate in are met, then you're allowed to go to the parking. Yeah. So as long as this is no, then you're not allowed to go in system wise and practically. The same for shunting, there is a check to say, can I can can this shunt movement be sent to the shunt application? If there is an issue, it will block it and set to no. The driver name and the trailer name and the tractor name are so are supposed to be entered by the by the service provider as uh, that's his homework and uh, contribution to this process. So he, he is asked to uh, uh, fill in via his carrier portal, via the serveprof portal, to enter these information. The gatehouse operator, as the person who receives uh, all those drivers with paperwork, uh, he, he has a screen and uh, one of the main features we just uh, highlighted here, there's a check-in screen, a gate out screen, uh, you can see the CTU is all the trailers you can see you can have a, you have a parking view and you have a dock uh, location overview where you can exactly see where, where wh what about which trailer is at which dock door um, and here th this is an example of the content of this screen which is again telling the, the ship it ID the CTU the trailer that has been uh, uh, brought in and the status of the gating process is the driver trained no problem with the CTU and also the customs clearance has been checked. And here you can see that 
uh, from this view, you can see that certain certain uh, shunt tasks already have a shunter assigned. And uh, th this is our problem shipment, the, the, the 44, where we have to change the dock door. And the dock door is changed by the transportation planner upon request of uh, the warehouse. So the transportation planner on OTM shipment level, he is using his workbench to do a mass update and says, I'm, check, I'm changing it to G. Uh, G17 because there is a problem and in the background immediately the related shunt task will also be changed to G17 and, um, and we are going to recalculate the time uh, to, to, to ensure that we are at the gate at the doctor at 3.15 to then say okay if I need to go there to G17 I need to start at 30.10 with my shunting. The reservation which we are doing on the parking one hour prior to arrival uh, results to this type of information. So we have a parking location uh, found at P92. Um, it's used for shunting and it's set to reserve. This you have seen in the flowchart. And this is our uh, test uh, shipment. So this is the looks and feels of uh, a gatehouse operator who can follow uh, if he is interested on the, the number of uh, parkings which are reserved. And there was a lot of attention on um, how many parkings do we still have, uh, are empty or not full. So they were using these type of screens to uh, constantly mirror and check if there was uh, sufficient uh, empty parkings. Okay, this we have uh, uh, quickly checked already at the gate in. You, you can, we, have, we are using a flex field to override potentially the, the trailer ID because what obviously can happen is that the service provider did not do what he was asked to do. He did not change the, the CTU. And then at arrival, a different CTU number uh, pops up uh, and there is a, a mismatch between the system and what, what is standing at the gate. And then the gatehouse operator can make a change here and, 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 and make an adjustment. There are some other activities which the gatehouse operator can do as you as, you, as I told you, if there is, um, <clears throat> if there is an urgent uh, situation that the driver must go uh, to the doctor because he is late, then uh, we are changing, we, we can force the process to uh, change it from a regular shunting process to immediately go to the doctor uh, to, uh, to do a live load, uh, a live unloading. A couple of other features, but uh, th th that's a bit more detail. This is the driver trained. Uh, the situation for driver trained is that we, we kept it as a manual activity at the moment, but uh, th there is an e-learning pro uh, project in, in place where uh, in the near future, the driver is going to attend a course and uh, he will get a QR code via his mobile if he has followed the training. And that information is then shared with uh, this uh, solution to immediately set the, the driver into a trained uh, status. Um, from what I told you in terms of events, um, during the progress of execution, we are building up events. So here you can see against um, um, the, the, the shunt movement that we indeed had a, a successful arrival at 1245. We, we had a um, uh, on-site message at uh, 1248 because the gate in was completed. And um, uh, time-wise, uh, the the, the task was sent to the shunt planning application and uh, the shunt planning application has said, yes, I have found a shunter and I'm acknowledging you that uh, this shunt task has now been assigned to a, a, a shunter. So even for those type of messages, we are getting status. So this helps up to build up the history on the progress. So shunt planning, uh, shunter assigned is one of these messages. And this is seen by uh, the gatehouse operator or any transportation planner. Okay, the, now the interesting part for those who, who haven't uh, seen shunting. Uh, so far, it was uh, quite a lot of OTM screens. The screens that we are going to show you now is about the, uh, the shunt application itself, which we have built from scratch. There are features about users, a list of tasks and shunters. I'll start with the shunter. The shunter is this unit, where, which you probably recognize. The, you can set up as many shunters as you want. You can set them into active or not. And you can assign a certain shunter break profile. 
which tells what for a certain shift, how many shifts and within a shift when, when there is a, a typical a break. And we take, uh, we, we take those shifts in, uh, into consideration. And um, the tasks that we are sending are, um, are shown in this particular way. So we have a screen that says uh, the shunter that has been found. This is our uh, test case shipment, the 44, with uh, the internal uh, customer reference. Uh, we know the start time uh, because of the end time on the appointment from here to here, and it's not yet uh, uh, pinned. There is another task which I wanted to show you, which is shunter C. It's still, it's already in progress because after it was pinned, the status changed into P from pinned. And this is this is this list then shows the let's say for the shunter planner um, um, what's currently in execution. If the shunter planner says, I see an issue, I want to force the planning to change the shunter from one to another, he has the ability to uh, overrule and assign a different shunter manually. So he can do that. Um, the next thing is that there is a button in the process there where the shunter driver can force a pause on the shunt task. If there is an issue or there is a, a, a reason to stop a shunter, he can do that immediately via the screen. He's pushing this uh, little button and this triggers a warning message directly on the screen of the shunter driver to say, oh, stop, there is an issue task, uh, you must pause and you must contact your uh, the shunter uh, planner uh, to check what, what's going on and you have to wait for further instructions. As soon as it's resolved, then it switches back to normal. Finally, this, the shunter driver itself, the person on, on the shunter unit, he on his device, he has also a screen which we have created, which is basically uh, uh, the, the classic information. I need to go from a certain, in this case, uh, a dock door back to a, a parking, the timings, the CTU, and um, the, the, there are these boxes here, which are location constraints. Here, you can tell that there is a specific instruction, which is important to know, to understand for the shunter driver, that any trailer that he is trying to put on that location, he must honor a certain instruction. Yeah, you, it could be you have to put in the, uh, the CTU in its highest air suspension mode, or in this case, uh, uh, you need to put it close to the, to the fence. And only if he confirms the red and understood, then he can continue the process. If he tries to ignore it, he cannot, he cannot continue. So it's just a kind of safety check. After he has uh, done the uh, read and understood, uh, he can finish and, and continue this task. That's here. Uh, back to our um, shunt test case shipment, uh, the 1044. We are, I'm going to show you that at, uh, at the time of 1304, the driver is submitting his action pin, which says I've picked up my CTU from parking 92, and I know I need to bring it to uh, G17. As soon as it's pinned, um, we are running some activities. What we are going to do is based on this pinned activity, the source location, which is parking, will be immediately set into empty. Yeah, so it's free for the next uh, uh, activities for other shunt activities. And the, the shunter planner, the person who can oversee all the tasks, he can see that the pinned status has arrived and we are setting this new icon, the P icon. And um, either gatehouse operator or transportation planner, he will be able to see also that the activity has pinned because we are sending the pinned event at 13.04 uh, against that uh, shunt activity. So how, this is how we're synchronizing the, 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 the on the yard activity so other persons are aware of the status. Same for if it's completed, he dropped it at the parking or at the dock door and uh, G17. We are doing that at 13.07. And if that happens at 13.07 and we are looking at the, the dock door location, we are uh, setting that into full. So it's blocked for other activities. And this is the CTU, the trailer that has been uh, moved there. It, the shunt task will as such, because it's completed, will not be visible anymore for the, for the shunter planner. Um, but, but we have added uh, again, some events on the shipment itself, 
which is, uh, well, we have seen the painted, 1304. Now we have the, the completed at 1307. <clears throat> and we are sending the, ca the carrier at door uh, the message to the warehouse. Some last screens uh, for the shunter driver. As mentioned, uh, if there is low time, he will be asked to check parkings, to, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, go over these lanes and check if uh, the system tells exactly what life, what the life situation is. So he can, he can perform a parking check. And for that, he has some uh, screens. So he is he's able to enter OTM. He is entering uh, via his device. He has a log on. He has, a, uh, he has the ability to enter the, the yard um, uh, part of the solution to make changes to ensure that the live parking situation is the same as the system parking situation. And this is quite important. Um, yes, yeah, some visibility. So this is an overview of all the trailers which are in the system. You can see from which service provider, uh, if it's full or empty and where it's parked at which moment. Um, same view from a parking point of view, you can see for each parking, if it's used, if it's full or empty, if it's full, uh, uh, which trailer should, should be there with the equipment uh, type. And if it's blocked, then you can see that it, it's blocked from here. Um, yeah, this is more or less what we wanted to show you. And uh, as a reminder, this is again the shunt execution. Where, uh, where we went through uh, these events, show the progress. So this hopefully gives you a, a bit of better view that we constantly are refreshing all these statuses by events. And because of events, it, it goes into the next step of this process until it's completely uh, uh, either loaded or unloaded, and then it disappears from, from this list. And I think, this is what I try to explain. And um, yes, um, if there are questions, I can pick them up from the chat. This is what I understood. But let us have a look. There's a question. Are you using any third party tools to support this YMS or is it all OTM? Now it's all OTM. Besides the, 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 the flow uh, tool, which we call Evolve. To set up. Um, but obviously, from a from a technical point of view, um, our the, the the yard application, uh, the yard cloud application itself, um, there there are there are in that way there are um, uh, there are applications that uh, our um, uh, technical team have set up in in order to ensure that the communication is working uh, picture perfect. Um, the exact list of those applications uh, from a technical point of view, I, I, I cannot provide at the moment, but if anyone who's interested of the landscape of, of that level of detail could raise this question and we can, we can see if, if, the, if my colleague Carl Thorne from uh, here is the, uh, the, the development lead, if he's able to, uh, to provide some uh, feedback on that one. Okay, um, the next question, um, is there a way this application can track the movements using electronic tracking devices? So this is basically a label on, on the, probably on the CTU uh, to, to recognize the, the CTU ID itself. Uh, I think yes, um, the confirmation uh, of the, of, the step in the process where we need to be sure that the right CTU uh, arrives at the gate and compare it with the one which is uh, in the system. Um, I, I can imagine from a technical point of view that we can uh, read that via an, an extra interface to listen to these type of electronic tracking devices. Uh, it's not needed in 
in terms of positioning, try to uh, know the exact position, the GPS position of that particular CTU, uh, as I try to uh, explain, because this, this is what we are doing, um, basically uh, by continuously um, checking and, and, and checking the, the parking inventory uh, via a manual uh, process. I hope this uh, answers uh, the question. We are running for this customer. We 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 uh, we have it at the moment on the on-premise situation, but we have the experience. We have built it. Starting we are building it on uh, on Oracle uh, Cloud uh, in in the, in the past setup, and uh, at the second stage we moved it uh, uh, onto on-premise. Does this just create appointment slots automatically in OTM? Uh, yes. Um, the, the information on appointment is already uh, handed over uh, via these uh, ground schedules, these uh, scheduled trips or ground schedules. And uh, we are uh, reading those um, requested in, um, uh, appointment times via reference numbers, and we are inserting via workflow those uh, appointments related to uh, to the uh, stops it can be multiple stops uh, even and on each stop we will have a dedicated uh, appointment yes so this is all everything is uh, automatically uh, uh, created for this uh, project in terms of appointment slots Thank you, Marco. That is all the questions that we have that have come in so far. I would definitely um, encourage you to reach out to Flow Group uh, through their booth if you do have more questions on that. Um, but we appreciate everybody coming to this session today. And Marco, thank you very much uh, for sharing this topic with us. Okay, it was a pleasure. And uh, hopefully, um, yeah, it. Um... It was clear and um, opened up some um, options to see if this uh, can be used or if it's applicable in the future. Thanks, Marco. It was a pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. Bye bye. Are you still on? Is it okay, uh, Carrie?